In this episode, I sit down with massage therapist Susie Knudsen, and we talk about the week she spent cutting open and exploring a dead body and how that changed the way she sees life. Welcome to the Flower Lounge, a place for conversations with wildly creative people and a little plant-loving wisdom to help you experience life in full bloom. I'm Katie Hess, flower alchemist and founder of Lotus Way, and I believe in a world where we're all living at our personal edge. Welcome to this week's episode of the Flower Lounge podcast. I am beyond excited to have this guest. You guys are going to love this episode. It might evoke a lot of interesting responses. I am sitting here in Phoenix, Arizona with Susie Knudsen. She specializes in reflexology, craniosacral, facial, fascial release, massage, nervous system balancing, therapeutic touch, and grief massage for over 25 years. So she is an incredible expert at the body. I've known her for many years, personally and professionally, and she has a very interesting story that I want to dig into. So thank you for being with us, Susie. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. <laughs> okay, so we usually start off with this exercise where you close your eyes and go back to a time in your childhood when you played around flowers or plants okay. or trees and just think about what you're doing and who you are with, what you're up to, what memory comes in first. And if you can identify a favorite flower or botanical, reflect on the three words you would use to describe its personality. And when all that's clear, you can open your eyes and share anything you're thinking about. Mm. Right away, I went to Lily of the Valley. There was a little, out by where our air conditioner was, out in the backyard, there was a little, a bunch of ground cover, and in it was a bunch of Lily of the Valleys. And I remember always being so curious about those and going over and just uh, smelling them whenever they came out. And I loved those little flowers. There weren't many of them, but I always went to find them whenever they came out. They're so, so cute. And for how little they so are, they're cute. really fragrant. They're very powerful. So how would you, what three words would you use to describe their personality? Graceful. Sweet. I guess strong because the leaves are so, for such a delicate flower, I feel like the leaves are so strong and solid. So strong. Mm-hmm. Because what we find is how you describe your childhood flower describes the way that you bring your greatest gifts into the world. Ooh. Graceful, sweet, and strong. Wow. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you. Right? Okay. Maybe to outsiders. I don't know if I always give that off, but thank you. I love that. I love that. So we've known each other for a really long time. I think... Probably the listeners would get a kick out of that ridiculous story. Of, <laughs> not how we met, but that demonstrates how naive I was at one time. I knew you a little bit, but we didn't. I didn't know you enough to know that. We only knew each other professionally. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So do you want me to tell the story? You're better at the okay. storytelling than me. <laughs> so <laughs> I was a massage therapist at the spa where you were supplying all of our amazing product and you, I was the lead massage therapist. So you and I had a little bit. Yeah, we had a different. really special relationship because this was like not just any spa. It was like one out in North, Northern Scottsdale. And mm. they, they invited me to come in and seek out special flower essences from their property. And we fused them into all the products. And so we were like training all the newbies and yes. you were kind of like boss lady and <laughs> like getting everybody on board with all the flower essences. And yeah. The whole new so concept. yeah, we spoke a little bit more than the norm. But at one point I got an email from you as I think how it started. I get this email and you're like, hey, this is Katie from Lotus Way. I wanted to send on to you this like uh, Marie hero. Claire magazine is asking for massage therapists to participate in a story that they're doing. And I thought that you might be really interested. And I'm thinking, oh my God, like how cool would it be to be in Marie Claire? And I'm so happy and honored that Katie thought of me. So I open up the email and I start reading 
Like, are you, are you kidding me? I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> like, she's flipping kidding me. <laughs> so the story was about reaching out to massage therapists who give happy endings. Oh my God. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm so like, oh, does Katie think that I give happy endings? Because I don't think that I ever <laughs> presented myself that way, that I was that type of a therapist. So, and I also thought maybe I didn't know you well enough. So I thought, oh, she's got to be joking and she's probably messing with me. So I emailed you back. I'm like, hey, Katie, love the idea. But, you know, just so you know, wink, wink, I don't really, it's not really part of my protocol. I don't really do happy endings. <laughs> I don't give those. And I think at some point you must have understood once you read it, like, oh my God, that's what they're talking about, happy endings. Because you were just thinking... But wasn't I... Didn't you say that before I understood, I was like, yeah, joy juice. Yeah. (laughs) That was after. (laughs) So you're like, oh, 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 oh. And and I said, you know, ha, ha, ha. And you said, oh, and by the way, what what, um, flower essence can I send you? Cause you were going to send me something based on what flower I had picked. Oh, that's right. And so you said, Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't realize what a happy ending was. You just thought it was someone who has a fabulous massage <laughs> is happy at the end. <laughs> so as you oh email God. me back, you go, Oh my so God, I was so embarrassed. I'm so naive. And then you'd be like, PS joy juice coming your way. And I start laughing. So I'm like, Oh my God, now she's <laughs> We're still talking about happy endings. Well, you meant your product called Joy Juice right. coming your way. Like I'm sending you some Joy Juice, and I thought, like, oh my God, Katie's totally just your mind in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that was just a funny story because I was, I was think, I was really thinking I'm going to be in this magazine, and then I thought, mm, no, maybe, maybe not, <laughs> not for that article. <laughs> Ah, oh Lord, that was a good one. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we got a little closer. Um, <laughs> and then since then, what we uh, we've just well, kind of been in each other's realms for mm-hmm, many, many years. Mm-hmm. And what I'm most interested in talking to you about for this particular episode is your work that you did in Colorado that I think people that will find fascinating. I personally find it fascinating. It's like a treasure trove of juiciness and weirdness and. Mm-hmm. Oh my godness. Yes. Goosebumpy still wild still processing all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us what you did and why you did it? Or just like kind of how you came up to that point of mm. so what I did end up doing. I went to Colorado Springs last summer and did a six day dissection class. But and it was not a typical dissection class. This was for kind of set up for non-medical people who work on body, who want extensive knowledge that you typically can't get in classes. Um, and I'd been finding over the years, I wanted to get to know the body better. And you know, you learn in school, you either see pictures in a textbook or you hear from a teacher or however you learn what you learn about the body gets presented to you as the truth. Like, this is it. And actually, here's a picture of this nerve or here's a picture of this muscle. It's the truth. It's like anatomy sketches or something. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's sketches or even photos in a book, when you're learning, you just take it on as, okay, well, that's what it looks like. That's the truth. So as I kept going on and on in my career, I just wanted to know more and more. The more I got sensitive to what I was doing, the more I thought, what am I really feeling here? Like, am I really feeling a knot? Is it really a knot in a muscle? What does a knot really look like? Or what does tension really look like? And I kept thinking, God, I wish I could (laughs) peel this person's skin up and get in there and see what is this? Like, am I really on muscle? Because we tell a story when we're talking to our clients. Well, here's this muscle that I'm on. But I started going, is that, is that true? Or, is it true? Right. And are there knots in the muscles? Right. What does that look like? And trigger point, you know, we get all these terms, we do all these methods, fascia. I went to classes to learn how to manipulate fascia. Well, but what is that? What is that really? What does it really feel like? And then you haven't even put in the, the like I say, hardware versus software. The hardware of the body is all the physical stuff, but then it really isn't anything until the software kicks in, which is, you know, electromagnetic energy and 
the physiology of the body. Without all that, it's just hardware. Just hardware. So, I, so that didn't come till I went to the class. But anyway, I, want, I just wanted to get deeper, deeper, deeper into what am I really doing here? And I keep telling myself and my clients the story, but... And so I, I had wanted to take some sort of a cadaver class for years. And I thought, well, maybe I could go at it through a university or a, through a hospital and ask if I could observe or can I, how can I get in there deeper? And I'd gone to body worlds and seen the fixed, the plasticity model of the body, which was fascinating, but I still needed to feel it. Like I need to get in there and feel it. So years went by and I, I you know, you leave the idea and you just keep doing your doing what you're doing. And then finally, somehow I stumbled across some videos on YouTube of a dissection. And I loved the way this gentleman treated the body. He looked at it in such a loving way. It was not purely anatomy. It was, he just had so much heart in what he was doing. So there was a series of six dissections. And then I, you know, explored, went, found out he had a website, went to his website and found out he actually does classes. So um, I couldn't get into the one I wanted to. So I waited a whole year wow. and signed up for, I knew I, and I finally found the guy I wanted to work with. So it was last, last summer, I went to this, I decided to do a, a six day class and they do either fixed or unfixed. So fixed means they've, they've like drained they all drain the fluids the and that, that body could have been deceased for a long time, but they can, once they've fixed it, they can store it. And, and then there's unfixed, which you're working with a body who's, there's nothing that's been done and you have to get someone that has just recently passed. And then you time is kind of of the essence because you're working with the real deal. Well, I knew I didn't want that. And he had said either is equally fabulous. So I picked the fixed. So anyway, I got there and I, I was a little worried that it would be more the, I didn't want to pass out. I'm not super great with that. Okay. And I'd never really worked with, and I'm not good at watching people have things done that are nasty. And so I wasn't quite sure. But the thing that surprised me was that was not the issue at all. So you get in there. There's other people. It's like Yes, there's about 25 people in the class. There oh, wow. were three cadavers. Oh, wow. And so they're, they're, they're covered at first. So you're in there, you're meeting each other as a class. And, and the, what I thought was cool, these are people from all different backgrounds. There was a Broadway, ex-Broadway dancer who he was now teaching dancers and he needed an, a deeper knowledge of the body and how it really worked. There was an LA cop who she was a trainer. She trained recruits and she wanted a deeper knowledge of the body. There was chiropractor. There was retired OBGYN. There were some, there was a one woman who wanted to start a program like this on the East Coast. So she wanted to see how he ran his class. There were random body workers, a craniosacral practitioner. Gosh, there were some, I would call them lifelong learners, people that just had already taken the class two, three times, and they just kept coming back for more and getting deeper, deeper into it. So it was really a random assortment, which made it really, really interesting because we were all there for different reasons. Uh, there was a really cool, she wasn't a yoga practitioner, but she did some sort of melt method, body work. Um, so all, all kinds of people. Um, so the thing that really struck me is he did say, you guys need to realize that most medical people don't get this deep into bodies. They go to a class where sometimes there'll be a tech that does the dissection. Oh, wow. And they have the students gather around and here's what, here's what's going on. But he did his class completely differently. He used the example of Italy. In Italy, the medical students, it's very hard for people to get a hold of cadavers because they don't typically donate their bodies to science. So he said people going into the medical field don't have a lot of access. They might have one cadaver that they have to work on through the entire semester, a whole class, one cadaver. He goes, here you are, 25 people on three cadavers for six days, nine to five. So 
that in itself was surprising because I just figured everybody has that kind of access if you're in medical school. So we, and he said, the other thing he does is he looks at the body a little differently. It's more holistic. We're not going to cut into one, say, arm and go through to the bone. We are going to take the skin layer off. Or we are, not him. Then the day two, we are going to remove the superficial fascia layer. Day three, whew, we are going to get down to the deep fascia muscle layer. Day four, five, six is kind of like you're on your own. Whatever you're here for is what you're going to do. So it was, it was, it blew me away. I had no idea it was going to be that. Not do it yourself, but you are immersing yourself in this and you're going to do what you need to do. And it literally was, here's a hemostat and here is a scalpel, go to town and what you're here to do. And of course he was there the whole time and walking around and doing special projects with us or helping us, but it was our job to explore. And it was amazing. I mean, it, it, was, it blew me away, everything about it. It was very emotional. So wait, let me just get this straight. So you met each other. The bodies were covered up. Mm -hmm. There's about seven or eight people per body. Mm -hmm. Yes, we went, we picked the cadaver that we felt drawn to for whatever reason. By vision? By whatever. They were like them. lying down flat? They were lying down flat. Yes. So we uncovered them and they were all, all elderly one gentleman was actually in his late seventies, but we all thought he was in his forties or fifties. He was a, he was giant. He was a large man and he was just strong and solid. And we were all shocked to find out that he was in his late seventies. And the other two, there were two men and one woman and the two men were in, the other two were in their eighties. That's even just interesting from the get go that he told you to choose the body you felt the mm -hmm. most drawn to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. For whatever reason. Wow. Okay. So, and then he just handed you a scalpel and said, you're going to cut in. Well, the really, the thing that kind of blew me away, but looking back, it was so wise of him. He said, before you work with these people, you need to meet them as they would have been in real life. And this, this, this is going to sound really creepy, but, <laughs> but that's how it is. And looking back, it, it makes sense. Um, we are going to stand them up and you are going to see them as you would in real life. You would have stood and shook their hand or saw them eye to eye. You would never meet them laying on a table in real life. So we did. We one at a time went to each and we had to stand the <laughs> cadaver up off like the table. You had to pick it up? Mm -hmm. We all did. We all participated. Wow. And Heavy. That, yeah, awkward. Heavy sack of bones. But we did it. Right. Um, and of course, we all were properly, you know, lab coats and gloves and, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, that's that was really jarring, but very, um, that, that, it flipped a switch. So you definitely saw these as these were people who lived and breathed and they were on this earth for years and they had a life story. Something about having them meet, having you meet them face to face made a big difference. Then we got them back on the table. And then eventually we started with dissecting the skin layer. So you're already learning how skin feels, how the connective tissue between the skin and the layer below it. There's more, there's so much fascia. It's, there's so much connective tissue. It's so important, but the layer between the skin and the superficial fascia, there's a layer that needs to go. You have to take your scalpel and lift that up. And some of it is very loose and fluffy. Some of it is very tough. Mm -hmm. So depending on where on the body it is or, or if there'd been trauma to that area, would make it either loose or easy. Now, now the skin itself, very tough, very leathery. The, and every layer had their own, its own feel and almost like personality, the superficial fascia versus the deep fascia. The superficial fascia is very light and fluffy. And that's interestingly, and this, this was what really struck with me 
because so many of us, especially in our society, get so angry at our superficial fascia because that's our fat, our adipose tissue. Oh, I just wish I didn't have this or I'm, you know. You mean like the little tie around our waist? Yeah, that. And I just have too much flesh on me or I wish I wasn't so, I wish I didn't have this. I need to lose this. But he said, you know, just be aware that it is a, it conducts energy in your body. It's, it's there for a reason. It's protecting you. It's so important. He actually, not in our class, but it, in one of his videos, was able to dissect the entire sheath, shall we say, of fascia and took it off of a cadaver in one piece, like a cloak, like a jacket oh that you God. wear is your superficial fascia. Is that what they, is that myelin sheath or is that on the brain? No. Myelin sheath is the brain. It's, yeah. And our, so this is like a This is like suit. the fluffy, yeah. It's the, you're, you have raw chicken and you yeah. see the yellow. Like a kind stuff. of a, a transparent-y white. Yeah. Almost kind, kind of, of bubble wrappy. Yes. Yes. So you're saying there is a layer of that all in one piece that it's encompasses dead, every yes. part of us. Yes. And he took it all off in one piece? Yes. Not wow. with not in, with us, but in one of his videos. Wow. And he said, just, you know, keep that in mind when, not that he would ever judge someone getting liposuction or deciding what they want to do with their own body. He said, just be aware that you're kind of cutting a hole in the jacket. Sort of just as say, can you have a different relationship with your superficial fascia? So that blew me away. That, and the whole thing was about, wow, it really blew apart my idea of my idea of how the body really is and how you want to organize it in your mind. And, oh, well, I saw these pictures and I saw this textbook and I had this teacher tell me that it's like this. Well, (laughs) <laughs> and he told us, you're going to be the new teachers because you're the ones who are seeing that. That story might not be true of how the body is organized. Plus, you saw a picture in a textbook. That was one body, one. You saw a picture. Well, that artist had to make it pretty. <laughs> so he had to remove some of that fascia. It was a lot about the fascia and how how we treat the fascia and how, you know, like he said, when you're dissecting, you want to get to the the good parts, the cool parts, the sexy parts is the beautiful muscles and the beautiful nerves and the the bones. And so there's a bucket where you put all the fascia, you let the bucket, all the packing material, you throw it in the bucket. But that really the stuff in the bucket is what we really need to be focusing on. Wow. Um, Or we need to not be discarding it in our search for knowledge it's just as important as everything else. It doesn't belong in the bucket. Well, it's not just packing material, right? Right. It's not just something you toss out. It also has a story and there's a function. It has a story. It's it's kind of more the emotional, um, I would say, if you wanted to compare adipose or superficial fascia or fat to deep fascia, which is that strapping type. Deep fascia is more the very strong, very organized tissue that wraps around muscles, it wraps around, it really, it, it keeps a muscle, it gives it kind of gives it its shape. That, that type of fascia is very tough to cut. It serves a specific purpose, but it's very sort of slow and steady and stable and predictable. The superficial fascia is not predictable. It's, I mean, look around you, every person has a different body and that's usually due to the superficial fascia, but almost like that's what holds, that's the messy emotional part of life. That's the stuff you just can't control. And that's a little bit how we, I started looking at it. And that's why sometimes I think we get mad at fascia. It's like, why can't I control? Why can't I control my body? Why can't I control everything? And then there's that other fascia that's just like steady eddy. So there's so much, there's so much, I'm still processing it all. But that is what I started to learn about. And after doing this, you just can't work on a body the same way anymore. You just can't. When you say work on a body, you mean give a massage? On a massage, yeah, to do massage. It changed the way you feel totally. yes. everything? yes. Because you have to put aside the story 
of course, clients need to know, you know, what are you doing or are you on this muscle or here's what's going on with my body. But now really all I do, I've so simplified my work into, I kind of don't, I can tell you the what now you need to come up with the why, you know, why is this like this? I can tell you what I can show you what's going on in your body, but I can't tell you the story. You have to, that's your job. But also I can go to a body. Now I've simplified it into, I just look for areas of congestion and areas that just aren't flowing. And I try to make it flow again. Now, whether that means your muscles are tight or your fascia is tight or you have connective tissue or scar tissue, that's sort of secondary. I don't care why. I just find the what. And then I can open it up and loosen it. And then you're going to touch the skin differently than you are the adipose tissue. And then if you get down to the deep fascia layer, you work on that differently. They're all different. It almost reminds me of when like talking into talking to Kai and Juliana about like the pulse readings and how they're mm. like different layers of the mm-hmm. pulse readings that will give you different information about the body and psyche. It almost feels like that. Like yeah, that would be like just like touching someone on their skin and like rubbing their skin is so different from like what's underneath that all the way down into yes. like what's inside your bones and stuff yes. or connecting your bones. Yes. And that pulse reading that, I mean, that, that fascinates me that you can really feel all of that, that they're so trained to feel that right away. But yeah, it is, it's similar. It's yeah, different. It's a similar thing that you're sort of, you just can't work the same way on every area of the body or on every person, or you just mm-hmm. learn to, everybody is completely different and you have, that's why I don't really label myself any type of a therapist. I'm just more integrative. I, you might need craniosacral, light, light touch. You might need deeper. You might respond more. I just kind of feel in and see what, what's, how's the body best going to open up. And if it doesn't, then it's telling me I don't want to. So not my business. It's their business, whether they want to open up or not. I can, I can just be there to Open the doors. You open the door. Yeah. And if it's today, great. If not. Because, okay. So for the listeners who aren't familiar with like the spa world, typically Mm -hmm. you'd have like 50 minutes. You have one body, you got 25 minutes for the front, 25 minutes for the back, everything equal, equal, equal. Whereas in your own practice, you're basically just like going for the target areas of what needs most help. Yeah. I, you know what? It's, it's like two different conversations. I have the, I chat with a client before we get on the table. What's going on? Why are you here? What are you feeling? Because I want to hear from their head. Now they're sometimes speaking more from their head. Here's what's going on. I have this shoulder issue and my hip hurts or whatever it is. That give me a starting point. And then that'll determine whether I start you face up, face down, however. Or And I want to know, do, are you? is that why you're here? Do you just want that focus or do you really want all of our massage? So there's that conversation that happens sort of like an agenda, if you will. But once I get my hands on the body, the agenda kind of goes out the window because now I'm having a conversation with their body, <laughs> sort of their soul or their their words aren't, they're on the table, but now I'm chatting with their body because they might say to me, I really want my hip worked on today. And then I get on their hip and their hip says, I do not want you near my hip today. So then we'll do something else. So, and then I'll ask, you know, is this enough? Do you want more? And, but I'm kind of, I can have a conversation with the person if they want to talk, but I'm having another conversation with their body and just saying, how about this? Can we open up this? So, yeah. I remember getting a massage from you pretty recently after you took that class in Colorado. Mm. And (laughs) you were one of my first clients, I think. You seem sort of shell-shocked to me, like kind of at a loss for words and just Hmm. like it was a whole new experience, like massage was a whole new experience for you. And shell-shocked is a better word than traumatized, but there Mm -hmm. was something in there that was just sort of like had you kind of Mm wide-eyed. What surprised you most about spending six days dissecting a cadaver? Well... In the moment, it was that I was so emotional. I cried a lot. And the first time it was just because the cadaver that I was working with, he was an elderly man and it 
somehow I, I was working around his ear up kind of trying to get to the temporalis muscle. And I, I did a cut that to me felt too deep and it jarred me. Yeah. And then I burst out crying and I had to leave the room and I just was losing it. And then later, as I thought about it more, it kind of reminded me of my father. He had dementia. And I think there was some sort of a like, wow, I had no conscious idea that I was going to this gentleman's brain. But subconsciously, I would, why was I working on his brain? And then suddenly I was, or brain area, that sort of opened up the gates and I just kind of grieved for my dad. And then, and that started it. But then beyond there, I, it, every time we met in the morning before we got going or met afterwards, because we would talk before class and after class as a group, my tears would just be flowing. So it opened up a lot of emotional stuff that I, that shocked me. I just didn't, I didn't know that that would come up and I can't even put a pinpoint besides my dad beyond that. What, what was the grief about or what was the crying about? What, what was that about? So that surprised me the most that it would be such an emotional, I was more worried about, Oh, am I going to pass out? Cause it's gross. And that wasn't the case. It was more like, why am I crying so much? And then, and then I will say come day five, I was done cutting. And from then on, I just put my scalpel down and I said, I'm going to show one to feel muscle. I wanted to like put my hands on someone as I went in a massage position, like on their shoulders without the skin on or on their shoulders without the superficial fascia. So I kind of spent the time observing days five and six because I couldn't emotionally handle. It was too overwhelming, too sensory overload, I guess, to keep cutting and cutting because it's very... Oh, it's just so many things. I mean, it just brings up so many things. But the biggest, coolest thing was the whole like hardware software. Like, oh, I, I kind of, in my naive way, thought that when we opened the body up, it was going to be like fireworks and bells and whistles and it was going to be all pretty and it was going to be, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Look at how this body is working. And, and it wasn't, it was just maybe because I had a fixed cadaver, maybe it would be different if it was unfixed. But opening the body and seeing just, boom, it was very earthy, like, what? Well, this is it. Those are those nerves that you were so excited to see. And mm, there's the muscle tissue you were so excited to see. And it was exciting on one level, but it wasn't electrified. And that's when I realized, well, it's, that's, the so that's where the software comes in or the universal, the energy or the God or the whatever, the soul is gone from this. And now it's just a vessel. So I was a little bummed that it wasn't all the fireworks. And I realized it was really the software that I wanted to see. And the software was mm. gone. Oof, wow. It was all hardware. So it's like having your laptop and you're either like Googling and getting information and watching videos yes. and seeing photos and images and seeing stuff and feeling <laughs> stuff. Or you're just like staring at a closed laptop. Or it's table. off. <laughs> right. And you were the yeah. most excited about the software. I was, which, which I had no idea. I thought I would be all into the hardware. And that had already left. You know, it was already gone. Wow. So that's why I was so shell-shocked because I get back to work and I'm thinking, what? who cares what muscle I'm on or who, who cares what nerve I'm on? Like, do we need to know that or do we need to just find it and help it or talk energy to energy? your system to my system. Can I just be here with you and see if you're willing to open it? And I can't do a massage to you. I can only do it with you. And no, so many people think they want you to do a massage to them. Like get in there and get rid of it. Well, I can't because <laughs> it's our, our software talking to each other. Wow. I, I mean, so that's why, yeah, I'm still a little shell shocked, but my, my work is completely different now. I don't do massage strokes the way I used to. It's more like my little fingers get in there and I'm trying to just feel what I felt like. Oh yeah, that, okay, okay, okay. Where are we? So that's what that's what's really shifted and is still shifting. Oh God. Okay. So I have like a million questions for you right now that I can hardly articulate. First one is, did the cadaver have any knots or was it totally loose? No, that's the thing. And the muscles were beautiful. They were beautifully laid out. Smooth. Smooth. So where did all that tension go? <laughs> so what is it that I'm really feeling? 
partly, yes, I'm feeling some tissue. Mm. Oh my God. So what am I feeling? Basically what you're saying is like our emotional and mental state create everything in the body or anything that's slightly out of balance. Why didn't I find it? I found scar tissue. I mean, I'll say right. if someone had been cut into, yeah, I could see scar tissue. But right. when it came to the muscular level, I thought I was going to find all those knots. Oh, yeah, there's that. Oh, everybody has those knots in their shoulders. Everybody has those, you know, in the neck. And I thought that the muscle would be all bound up. And it was beautiful. It was beautifully laid out. Just that was textbook. And the tendons were beautiful and the ligaments were beautiful. Everything was really pretty. So, yeah. So what am I feeling when I'm on a body? When I feel my hands stop? What is all that? So it almost brings question to like, what actually are you doing with massage then? Mm -hmm. Because you're, now that you know it's not the hardware you know that just manipulating the hardware isn't yes. the answer. Yeah. So you're you're talking more about like, can I have permission to have the password to get into your software? Ooh. Can I have an artistic conversation with, you know, or do a little dance or poem with your software <gasps> to see if we can create a new conversation to affect oh. the hardware differently? <laughs> Of that yes well and I always yes. what's the password so I'm the type of person who I don't really like massage I mean I love massage mm -hmm. but I have always been very sensitive so sometimes I'll like feel the feelings of the therapist who's working mm -hmm. on me and I just mm -hmm. I'm like oh, I can't mm -hmm. but you're different and you're the only person that I let touch me in that way and I've always felt with you like and this is even before you took your course but I've always felt like, you know, I close my eyes, you close your eyes, you work on my body and I feel like there is a conversation or like it's super artistic. Like there's something being created or made or mm -hmm. co-explored, like exploring. Mm -hmm. So I think that part of that is just, that's you as a, that's your quality. That's your nature. You have the special ability. Um. But then now with this like hardware software piece, it's kind of interesting. Like what the heck are we doing I, with massage anyway? Well, that's, yes. So yes. You can't this, manipulate it out. Right. Or you can, but it's just going to come back tomorrow, it's right? It's going to come back. Or I just don't feel truthful telling the same story I used to tell. Like, oh yes, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to work on these muscles and I'm going to, you know, you, that's the language you learn. I feel like the whole language I learned is not a sham, but it's just different. It's not really that. And if that's, that's what I have to say to get people to understand, that's fine because you have to tell them something. Here's my plan, but you're right. But on a deeper level, I'm like, what is my new language going to be with people? And are they going to accept that? You know, with a, you don't want to alienate clients by being all woo woo on them, but there is this point at which I can't lie and say, "Yes, I'm going to find your gluteus maximus and we're going to release it." I mean, on some level, yes, that's happening, but but I mean, my doors were blown open, so I'm. It's just I don't know what language well, to you, use right now. You saw it with your own eyes that mm -hmm. this yes. body didn't have any tension in it once the software was missing. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay not to have language. Yeah. Language gets That's in the way true. sometimes. I just want to do what I do. <laughs> it makes me think even about surgery, you know, just like, here's this thing. We got to cut it out. Like, or if you're going to do that, can you ask the, I mean, can we have a conversation with the, system or uh, sounds queer but can we talk to it and see is that the you right tell answer me. Or, yeah what, you've been what working on bodies do? for over 25 years you tell me can you have a conversation with the body yes <laughs> of course you can and how readily do these do bodies of people give out information that their mouths do not all the time <laughs> 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 and i you know the most 
the one I get a lot is, you know, people come in and, oh, I have this knot on my shoulder. It's really bothering me. Like it irritates them. I get it because we all have pain. I just want you to get in there and get it. I just want you just get to in get there. in there and Fix it. get in there. And, I, and, and you can't hurt me. You can't hurt me enough. You just get in there and work it out. Well, that's, again, that's making me, they're, they don't want to participate. They just want me to take charge, which the body's not going to let me do that. I'm sorry, it's not. Or it's going to, <laughs> you know, I could dig my elbow in you all day long. It's going to feel good for a day or two. But look at that attitude mm. that got you. Like, if that's your attitude, no wonder Fuck. you're body might be like this because you're saying you're I'm mad at you and get it out and I'm gonna work I'm gonna work it out I'm gonna make it hard on myself and so it's interesting the that self, that's it's the self-flagellation that created it in the first place so that's not right what's and good. now I'm gonna give it to someone else to get rid of it and if they don't get rid of it then they're not good I'm gonna go to the next one who's gonna get rid of it's it gonna beat it out who's of me beat it out of me <laughs> Because that's the pattern that created it in the yeah. first place. Yeah. So I'm going to find someone that I can fight with. Like, I want to, let's fight this. So what's let's the answer? Let's see who's stronger. If that's not the answer, what is the answer? Uh, communicating with, I, I do want to hear their story because it's not respectful to say, well, here's what I'm going to do because now I'm playing the same game. Well, I don't care what you want. Here's what I do. So, But I'm, in some senses, you are responding to what the body wants. I am listening okay. more. And I, I have to talk a lot when I get what I get a lot is you can go a lot deeper than that you know you can you can really get in there and then I have to open up a little bit of a conversation of let me explain a little bit what I'm doing your body's not letting me there let yet so we're working around we're we're getting there but just like you wouldn't walk out your front door and go into a full sprint you would warm <laughs> up a little you might stretch a little you might like jog a little and then you'll get into your full sprint I'm not going to get on there and just start pounding. So that's what I usually say is I'm, your body's not letting me in there, which is another form of disconnect. If they may not notice that their body is pushing me back and not letting me in. You know, that's really interesting because last time you were here, you gave me a foot massage and which I love. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> but I noticed one thing that was so remarkable was that you actually, after a while, like didn't do much massage. You just like held my foot off to an angle and you like held it there. Almost like you were holding up a mirror to my body of like, check out where you're holding. And then my body would like, oh, oh, oh I was holding on to tension there. Why was I doing that? Okay. And then you'd slightly move my foot in a different and just hold it and show me where I was holding tension. And then I could go, oh, why am I? Okay, I can relax that. And then before you know it, I had one of those, like, <laughs> like your head goes back and you kind of snore and like wake yourself up. Like, oh my God, you're like, oh, where did I go? <laughs> Holy cow, where was I? <laughs> but I thought like so brilliant that you actually don't even have to like rub and manipulate. Mm -hmm. or, you, you get just as powerful, actually more powerful results or let's say in that experience with myself and my body you gave me more powerful results just by simply holding up a mirror of where I was holding in my ankles. I love how you put all this because it's, it's such, I, I love how you word things because that's, um, that's very helpful to me. Your work is extremely powerful. I want to ask you a little bit about the grief that you experienced in the class mm -hmm. and how that was, you know, like with the teacher and the other classmates, like were you just kind of bawling mm. in a corner? Did you feel like you needed to isolate? Was it okay that it just kept flowing and people were like, I understand that you don't understand that this is happening and mm -hmm. we're just letting it all happen? Like what was the kind of space container that was held by the in teacher? Um, wonderful. And that's why I love these people so much. And and the instructor, it's it was all him, but he allowed us to just do what we wanted, be as active or inactive as you want with this time. No judgment. I mean, I, I've never been around people that were so loving in that way but without being gushy about it, just letting all of us do what we needed to do. Did anyone um, else have that kind of reaction? No. And I did. I, I mean, I, there were actually a couple of women during the time that had a little bit, but not so much of the 
Waterfall. Waterfall. And I did have, it did, It wasn't me that made the connection with my father. It was a woman at lunch who just, as I was saying, yeah, I don't know why I broke down and cried. And she said, so how'd your father die? And then it hit me like, oh my gosh. Okay, there's the connection. But I did say, one woman did approach me and she said, you know, you're just kind of being the emotional outlet for all of us. We're not doing what you're doing. We might be feeling it. We get you, but it's just not happening for us. So it's like you could grieve. For I, the I think group. I was like being emotional for everybody. And that's not normally my role. I'm not normally the super softy, but for whatever reason. So when my when I was crying, I just was like, well, screw it. And I had to go out a couple of times. <laughs> Just cry. <laughs> and then we would have a little, you know, he would read a poem or we would have an interesting chat before class and I'd kind of be sitting there weeping. Although there were a couple other people that at one point or another, they were really feeling it. So they just allowed me to do I, what I needed to do. I think it's great. You allowed you to do what you need to do because mm. you could have been like, no, you're right. mm-hmm. just yeah, just mm-hmm. suck it up and be tough. And I, and I, yeah, I did, I did, um, it was too much. That's why I kind of stopped with the actual dissection because at some point I was getting, you can get a little, it's tedious work. It's not super fun. It's tedious. It's, if you're, cause each of that, you can't just reach in and grab a handful of, you know, fascia out or grab that muscle. You have to tediously cut, cut, cut. Okay. you know, cut, cut, cut. And after a while, I was getting a little too focused in on that and not, I had to keep stepping out and looking at the big picture. So I had to keep leaving my table, go to the other tables, see what they were working on. Because everybody by day four, five, six had a project. One gentleman was extremely interested in the brain. He was a craniosacral practitioner. So he um, was really instrumental. And I mean, I got to hold a brain in my hand. I got to hold the pituitary. I got to hold lungs. And and that was the other thing. Each organ has its own texture and its own story and its own feel. Lungs fluffy, you know, liver is solid. It, it, was, it was so fascinating. Did but, you pick up the heart? Mm-hmm. That didn't, it was the brain more that like struck me. But yeah, the heart the heart intestines are beautiful intestines are not laid out like they are in the textbooks <laughs> <laughs> they can be shoved up here shoved down here shoved over here wow. depending on what's happened oh, it's in not life. this like perfectly little square no. coil of no <laughs> <laughs> livers completely different sizes and some are huge and uh, one was small. I mean, it, and the shapes of the hearts and the, I mean, all of it, it was, it would just, I mean, I again. suppose we all look different. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense yeah. that inside we look different. And the relationship between the heart and liver, I mean, organs can be, especially liver could be shaped over time to accommodate other organs. So you see how simpatico they are and how they all live together and how they make room for each other. And that was really fascinating. And that was a whole other, I can see now why people take the class again, because, you know, at first I was so overwhelmed. I don't, I will never do that again. And already I'm like, well, that would have been neat to see that. And if I ever did it again, I might look at this this way. And yeah, there's so much. Oh my gosh. Do you feel like the class gave you or your classmates a, a sort of renewed or refreshed sense of your own mortality? Like, is it giving you kind of a sub, even if subconscious, like sense of like, oh shit, right, this is going to be me. Like mm-hmm. I, my my software is living in a house mm-hmm. that I will have to leave or mm-hmm. vacate at one point in time. I haven't gone there yet, but it is. Mm, it it is no. I guess I haven't really thought much about that, and I'm not sure about the other participants if they've thought about their own mortality, but I mean, it gives you a new sense of awe of how this all comes together. And you just feel a little more loving of what your body does for you, but haven't thought yet about that, that piece of it. That'll probably come. (laughs) 
but it's more like just right now, just the b- blowing open the story that I've told myself for so many years, 27 years of doing massage therapy. I've told a certain story about what I'm feeling or what I'm doing or how things relax. And it's been, I realized how mechanical I've been, how, I mean, I'm new, known about energy and I, of course I work with, I can feel different a couple pulses and I, with craniosacral, you're tuned into the craniosacral pulse. So I know energy and all, but I didn't realize how much I relied on the anatomy to show me the way versus just stop now. Now, I, and you know, and I've always been, I was never a huge technical person. I wasn't very good in school at naming origins and insertions and names of muscles. I just, I could do it if I studied, but it wasn't natural for me. And and a lot of these people in class, they blew me away. They blew me away with their knowledge of anatomy. They could name, they could go to the, they knew everything. And it blew me away, the knowledge that they had. I just don't go at it that way. And I've always been a little more like intuitive and kind of like, well, does it really matter what muscle it is? Or can I just loosen it? Do you have to know the name of it? (laughs) No, (laughs) no. (laughs) Just so feel better. (laughs) The classes made me just not worry about that anymore because I don't know if it was a part of me that felt like I have, I'm more legitimate if I can be really technical and I can tell you, and that was my own issue I had with how I learn. So now I don't really care anymore. Especially if you know that all of the root causes relate, like are found in the software. Mm-hmm. Then what difference does it make? Right. It's probably that software can manifest it in different parts of the body. Mm-hmm. Still the same software. Mm-hmm. Do you find that the conversation you have with your own body has changed because of the hardware software realization that you had? Yes. Absolutely. Like I can, like if I'm stretching or feeling tension, I'm more likely, much more likely now to go at it really lightly and just go, I don't know how to explain it, just kind of go into it and work with it and and go, okay, don't be so frightened of this piece of tension. What is it really? Or is it, is it something mechanical or is it something, is it the software? So I'm just more gentle and more interested, I think, going into pain and not instead of like doing my regular old stretches or, oh, I stretch this muscle that way. It's more like I'll get my body into different positions to see if that'll release the tension. And then also just imagine it, just kind of sit with it. Like, okay, can you just, I'm paying attention. Do I still need to feel the pain or can I just ask it to disappear? And sometimes it just... All it needed was some attention or it needed me to move my body differently or it needed needed me to, I don't know, just pay attention. That is awesome. That's its language. It's So, so there's more curiosity and gentleness and rather than... Yeah. I'm going to stretch this. Right. Like, oh, I got to go to the gym or I have to take a, you know, more yoga, whatever it is. My old ways of dealing with my own aches and pains are... I'm very curious now to ask, what do you need me to know? Like what, what, what? And that's the, I do tell clients that that's the best language you can learn is how to read your body and how to pay attention to it. I personally believe that just by what you said, just by paying attention and being aware that that is 99% of what the body needs. Like you're saying it just wants to be heard and seen. And the moment that you acknowledge it, it's like there isn't yeah. really anything that needs to be fixed or right. solved or smoothed or adjusted even. It's like, <laughs> it's more like we need the attitude adjustment and yeah. then and then the body will just like, brrr, slip yeah. back, in, back into place. Like the little kid who's mommy, mom, you know, tapping, right. tapping, right. tapping, and then mommy, mommy, and tap, tap harder. And then and she's screaming like ignoring, and, ignoring, ignoring, yeah. ignoring, chatting with her chat, Like, and then if you just turn and go, what is it, honey? <laughs> And then they go, oh, what a hi. hi. They run off to play. <laughs> hi. That's sometimes I think what the body's doing. That's how it communicates through sensations. And I mean, the body is sitting there holding, holding, holding everything we've ever been through, every emotional hurt, every physical hurt. It's just 
storing all this information. And so sometimes it might have a little information overload. Let me unload some of this stuff. I don't want to take on anymore until I up download some other stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so tip for the listeners. Probably the majority listening have, could locate in their body right now. They could put their awareness into a point that contains the most discomfort for them. What would be a method you would um, use to help them bring in more curiosity versus frustration with that ache or pain? I'd say just first sit and take a deep breath and calm your brain a little bit because your brain is already telling a story. Oh, this is my old injury acting up. Oh, this is because I worked out too hard. Oh, this is because I'm super stressed. Oh, you know, you've already told yourself 10 stories and some of them are scary. <laughs> some of them are mad stories and frustrated stories, but just try to just I'm going to be like this neutralize. forever and I'm always going to have this pain. Yeah, me. like, oh my God, here it goes again. I'm never going to, like, I'm old. And for a lot of my clients, you know, they're frustrated. They're getting older. And well, that's more life piled on. There's more life yeah, some of it is just, there's a lot of stories. You have a lot more layers on you, a lot more interesting experiences just by living. So I would say like, number one, stop with the story. First of all, just kind of go, huh, isn't that interesting? Or what is this? Hmm. And seeing if there's a different story or am I, or are you on broken record mode? There it is again. Or just go into it. Sometimes, you know, the best way to get over something is go right through it. Sometimes you go right into it and feel it. Don't run away from it, but run into it. Sometimes that helps dissipate. And then letting your body move in weird ways, that's part of unwinding. Let your We tend to stretch in very specific ways because we've learned that in gym class or in workout classes, but letting your body go in weird positions is unwinding that tension. And maybe you need to twist your arm that way and maybe your neck needs to go that way. And it's a good thing to do it by yourself because your body can get (laughs) a little wacky when you do it. But just seeing like, oh, well, how does that feel or how does that feel? And but gentle just, movements versus like yeah. straining. Yeah, straining or pulling at something. It's like if you have a piece of rope with a loose little knot in it and then you pull both ends of it, now the knot just got super tight and it's hard to get out. That's kind of what people do when they're trying to stretch out a muscle. They just pulled it even tighter. So going the opposite. I mean, there's a billion things you could do, but I would say the first thing is see what kind of habit you're in pain habit or story habit. What do I always tell myself every time this comes up? And maybe there's a different story. Or ask your body, try, you know, treat your body as a friend, your best friend. What's up? In wrapping up, is there something that you often find yourself telling others, whether it's related to the body or otherwise, some piece of wisdom that just kind of springs into your heart in the moment, advice or, you know, something, some wisdom that arises just being kinder and not so frustrated with pain or frustrated with how your body is compared to how it was you know when you were 20 how it was when you were 30 how it was when you were 50 being kind and realizing that it just it can't you have so many years of experience it can't be what it was when it was 20 because when you were 20 you only had 20 years of experience so what is it now? Like kind of, can you meet it where it is now and not not wish it was back where it was? Because it can't, it just can't be. You can't. I mean, I work on 15-year-olds. Their muscles are super easy to work out because they have 15 years of experience layered in there. A 60-year-old, it's not going to feel the same. It just be, you know, be cognizant of that. It's it's not going to go back. I mean, mentally, you can still be a 20-year-old maybe, but physically, just try to be kind. Doesn't mean you have to not be healthy or feel good. It just means kind of recreating. How about a new story for this age or a new? I think that's my biggest thing is um, so many people want to go back to where they were at some point. 
I wish, I wish, I wish. And it's just that, yeah, that ship has sailed. (laughs) (laughs) But we can feel really good right now in a different way. Right. Oh, I love that. I've really enjoyed our conversation. I did too. Yeah. I can't believe time's passed. So we will put a bunch of information about you on our blog post for the podcast if you're looking to get in touch with Susie going forward. We also work together with her on special occasions like retreats. We will have some retreats and specific, very specialized events coming up at the building that you'll want to fly in for, say for a weekend or a week, and you'll be able to experience the absolute magic and poetry and artistry of Susie's work. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for letting me chat about it. Thank you so much for listening to The Flower Lounge. I'm Katie Hess, and we'll be releasing a new podcast every Wednesday. If you like what you heard or you know someone who might be touched by our conversation, share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe. To find out what your favorite flowers mean about you, take the quiz at lotusway.com. 